Welcome to our online midweek worship. We're glad that you are here. For this series, we have invited Pastor Paul Bowman to paint and reflect on the scripture. And so I hope that you will enjoy this special Advent midweek worship. Thanks for joining us. The voice of one crying in the wilderness says, Prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to prepare the way for the coming of your Son. Give us courage and faith to proclaim in word and deed the good news of your coming. Even as we wait in patience for that day when Christ will come again. Amen. The time is near, for we are like a breath, like flowers in the field, blooming one day and fading and gone the next. The time is near. What is a human lifetime in God's time? It's only a moment, authored with an eternal promise from your Lord. The ancient people were waiting, looking, wondering. We wait, we look, and we wonder.
The Lord calls us to be ready, to keep awake. And at first it seems as though perhaps the Lord is holding us in a law for us to be alert and ready and awake, but we discover that in this word it is yet another promise of God's mercy and grace. Be ready. Keep awake, for I am near. I am near to you now and always. God's words will come to pass. It's the promise that we see of this faithful God of ours throughout the scriptures, Old Testament and New. Many false words, false prophets, Inaccurate prophecies have been given generation after generation, centuries in time. Words stated even coming in the name of Jesus. But God's true word has always come to pass. And the words of the false prophets have not. And today now, God again gives you a promise in this word. The coming of the Messiah was foretold. God provided Jesus came as the living word, lived, died, rose, will come again to you, for you. The time is near. The sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and stars will be falling from the heavens. The powers will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then God will send out angels and gather his elect from the corners of heaven and earth. This word might be scary at first when we hear it because we want control. We want to know, perhaps, that we have more time for life or more time for self-improvement. Maybe that's even self-improvement before God. So before God comes, we maybe want to clean up our act or try to get things right with our neighbors or do more good for the world. But in the end, that is all our need for some sense of control. To determine or to author our own future, to write it out ourselves, to set our own goals and plans as if we can know that we have time out in front of us. But all of this comes from within ourselves. It doesn't come from outside of ourselves. And we become then the author of our own creation, or so we think.
With much denial, we become our own God when we try and direct our own future or tell God how our future should take place and expect that God fulfills it just as we want. But that is just not how it goes. God gives us this lesson to learn from the fig tree, a parable, a parallel to life. And in it we see seasons, seasons of this world, seasons of heaven and earth, of life itself, spring, summer, fall, winter. It becomes a metaphor for our lives. For as we see with the fig tree, as it puts forth the leaves, the summer is near and how quickly it will pass. How often do we hear people say things like, oh, how fast the years have gone by. But yet we may tend to live like we just might be the exception and outlive everyone else, or find that secret in order to outdo even this word of God that comes to us that says all things will pass away in the hopes that maybe, maybe, just maybe, I won't have to go through it like everybody else has. But yet, at the beginning of that passage today, but in those days, it says, after that suffering, then these signs shall take place. And these things will happen. gave us much to think and reflect on in this Advent message through word, song, and music. What stood out for you? What will you be watching and praying for this Advent season? What fills you with wonder? I again invite you to join
join Reverend Kristen and me for a Zoom worship on Wednesday nights at 7 as we reflect and pray together. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. I will be using the 1977 contemporary version, but please join in whatever version and in whatever language that you choose to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Even as we wait, watch, and wonder, God is with us.